Mars in the news a lot lately. In a groundbreaking discovery, NASA announced this month that the Mars rover Curiosity may have found evidence of life on the red planet. That's right, and as Fox 5's Dan Bowen shows us in this month's big idea, a lot of work's being done to actually send people there, too. And liftoff. Charting a path from one world to another. The dawn of Orion and a new era of American space exploration. NASA hopes its new Orion spacecraft will launch mankind to Mars in the next two decades. We've kind of now finally done something for the first time for our generation. It's a good day. Emotional because the first unmanned maiden voyage. Mark, one minute into the flight. Is the first time since 1972 a craft built for humans has gone beyond the International Space Station's orbit. A breakthrough world-renowned space expert Neil deGrasse Tyson says is long overdue. Ever since Kennedy said, let's go to the moon and come back within a decade, and we did it, I don't think we've done anything on time <laughs> in space since. But NASA's deep space desires may ultimately be tied to government budget bureaucracy. So the agency is leaning heavily on private companies to pick up the slack. And with privatization also comes a bit of healthy competition. They want to send people on a one-way trip to Mars, like the pilgrims moving from the new world from the old world to the new world. I have wanted to go to Mars for as long as I can remember. Meet Baz Lansdorp, CEO of Dutch not-for-profit company Mars One. Its ambitious plan? Establish a colony on Mars by 2025. We believe that uh, it will change the world forever if you can achieve this. But unlike any NASA mission, Mars One is a one-way trip, as in whoever joins this journey to the foreign world is never, ever coming back to Earth. Biggest challenge of Mars One is not in technology, not in finance. It's in finding a team that can actually do this. So four people that can fly to Mars in a small capsule. A relatively small capsule for seven months. Lansdorp estimates the project, which has drawn interest from private aerospace titans like Lockheed Martin, will cost about seven billion dollars. He plans to pay for it in part by turning this mission into a reality show. Hello, my name is Sam Osborne, and I'm an explorer. I embody the five characteristics that Mars One thinks will make for a great Martian colonist. This is literally a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. I want to go to Mars because I feel like an alien here. Thousands of people applied. New Yorker Sybil Silver Phoenix is now one of about 700 finalists. I have just wanted my whole life to explore space. An actress by trade, the former space camp geek, says she's ready to venture into the unknown, spending the next eight years of her life training to become one of the four chosen for the first mission. I can set foot on another planet, I'm signing up. <laughs> as soon as I heard that, I was instantly, instantly obsessed with it. I wasn't initially going to apply because I just thought it was kind of bananas. But then Manhattan resident and software engineer Mason Stragler changed his mind. He's now also competing for the final spot, I asked him what would he miss about Earth, a cool breeze, grass between his toes? I mean, of course, like, I love pizza. Am I going to get, I mean, I, I really love pizza. <laughs> um, so I'll probably miss, I'll miss a lot of things, but uh, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm going to bed on another planet. That's, that's, that sort of trumps everything. At its closest, Mars is about 35 million miles from Earth. That means it'd take between seven to nine months just to get here. But let's say that's the easy part. Even if Mars One is successful in landing a craft on the red planet, it's incredibly difficult to have human beings survive there. I think it's an admirable goal, an extraordinarily difficult one. Dr. Michael Shera is curator of the Department of Astrophysics at the American Museum of Natural History. He says from intense radiation to bitter cold temperatures. At nighttime, it drops to about minus 100 degrees. Even the most basic things like food, water, and energy are extremely difficult to recreate on Mars. You're going to have to take along plants that are going to be either able to grow in near vacuum. We don't know how to do that. An MIT study of Mars One's plans found astronauts would begin dying within 68 days of landing because of issues with growing crops. Critics also say the project is drastically underestimating costs and relying too heavily on technology still untested. I'm just not convinced that the technology is there and available to do it cheaply enough to do it on the time frame scheduled for it. So I'm, I'm skeptical. Lansdorp is used to defending his vision. Humanity is about pushing boundaries. That's why we're so successful. And this is the next boundary that we can push. If they develop the plan and if they succeed, um, the situation that uh, those first colonists will have is, is enviable. 
really. I mean, if they work hard, uh, they'll, they'll be providing for themselves, and they work a little harder, they're building for the future. It's not, uh, it doesn't seem difficult to me. I think my heart's already there. <laughs> I think that might be part of the reason I want to go so bad. Dan Bowens, Fox 5 News.